that part of the reason people get into addiction and stay in addiction is that's where their friends are. And you have to create a new community so that they can see that there's another way of living. And so that's what what we're, what we're doing. Everybody, I tried counselors, I had run-ins, like I said, with everybody. And nobody could help me up until I came here. And they were the last hope from my parents and myself. It's a complete understanding of addiction, which I didn't understand. And it's also dealing with myself and my own emotions and keeping them in check because I, I was lost. I had no hope. And uh, the people here brought me back to where I was thinking straight and I was able to have support from them. Adam Sos here for Rebel News. We are on location once again at the Alberta Adolescent Recovery Center. Last time we were here, we had the opportunity to speak to some of the staff, staff who uh, in their own rights have utilized this facility. Some of them have had family members utilize this facility. Today I am here at this incredible location's Stampede Breakfast. I'm actually going to have the opportunity to speak to a number of graduates and people involved and share their personal testimonies about the importance of places like this, places that aspire to helping people reclaim their life and places that aspire towards addiction recovery. And this is our latest helpnotharm.ca update. So I am now joined by Alan Storty, who's a board member here at ARC. I, I suppose my question for you, we we've spoken to some graduates, some people who have been here, uh, and they right. frequently relayed that, that many of the staff who've also gone through addiction, um, but, but ultimately the fact that people here understand what they're going through and still don't give up on them. How important is that? It's, a, it's extremely important. Uh, the problem with addiction is that it manifests itself in behavior that's abhorrent to, to most people and uh, art can see through that. They can see through that and they can help people. Not only the addicts themselves but the families. That's what's really important. All right. So I am now joined by uh, uh, MP for Calgary Middleport, Stephanie Cousy, as well as Dr. Dean Voss, uh, an individual people here lovingly refer to as Doc. Um, uh, for you, how important is it to be out here at an event like this, uh, advocating for so many young people reclaiming their lives uh, focused on recovery? You know, it is incredible what ARC has done, not only for this community, but for, I think, young Albertans, young Calgarians. And it is just an absolute pleasure to be here today supporting not only the organization, but all of the people who've benefited from this incredible organization. I guess just first off, if you could share a little bit about your experience, a little bit about your story. Yeah, I'm Bella. Um, so I've been sober coming up on five years this summer. So for me, I fell into addiction when I was pretty young. And by the age of like 16, I was using meth regularly and in and out of the hospital for suicide attempts. and. Um, I came here shortly after I turned 17 and it changed my life so much for the better. Um, I was able to stay sober like the entire way since. I haven't had any slip ups and um, now I've been working here as a staff member for the past three years. So I came into ARC nine years ago. Um, I was addicted to alcohol and drugs. Uh, my mom, Sandra, <laughs> this is her put me into ARC. I was 17 years old, um, about to turn 18, so she was very scared that I was going to kind of check myself out. Um, but we saw a light at the end of the tunnel here at ARC and got sober nine years ago and haven't looked back since. So how important was it to have family members, obviously your mom, uh, who, who are sort of continued to believe in you and believe that you could recover your life? Um, well, before ARC, it was kind of like at the point where they like didn't think there was anything right um they were kind of just like miserable and like they're kind of just uh i don't know what word to use but at their wits end or like yeah yeah exactly i don't want to say like gave up but yeah. like it was like they didn't know what to do and it was just at the point where it was like you know he's living right and then we found art right and I don't know, like, things just, like, slowly started to get better. Like, uh, I mean, I came in here March 23rd. I came from P-Chat. I had problems with just about everybody and just about everything, and I refused to accept uh, the reality of what I was doing to others and to myself until I came in here, right? And, I mean, I came here, you'd hear them say people, like, P-Chat told them, he can't be helped, you guys can't help him, there's no hope, you guys, it's a waste of time. How important was it to have an organization that rejected that narrative, didn't just sort of surrender you to addiction and said, no, this is a human being, we're, we're here for them, we're going to help them reclaim their life? Oh, well, it was huge. It's what saved my life, right? P-Chat had given up on me. Everybody, I tried counselors, I had run-ins, like I said, with everybody. And nobody could help me up until I came here. And 
they were the last hope for my parents and myself. Just about half dead when like my parents finally put me into ARC and, and it was hard, you know, for the first couple months and stuff. And I eventually I went to hospital, um, things got so bad and, um, you know, like there I, I finally decided that like I had enough of the life I was living and I came back voluntarily and worked hard to finish the program and I've been doing my best to stay on that track ever since. So my son had issues for about a year and a half to two years and we kept hoping that he would find his way out of it and that we could help him but we just didn't have the same language we just didn't know what to do and so having these um, these clinicals and the staff that actually have been through it and can see through all that manipulation is just it's critical. It's yeah. critical that uh, that these kids, and it's critical that they relate to these uh, to these kids and see that these these um, staff members are actually um, doing very well for themselves, yeah. and that there's um, hope after their all their struggles because they come in and they have no hope. Yeah. Uh, many of them don't even want to live. They want to use drugs till they die. Um, but to see these these other young people sort of knocking it out of the park, then. These kids really, you know, they really get this sense of hope and then it, it really spurs their program on. So, In relation to recovery in this center here at ARC, it, uh, it ultimately, it saved my kid's life, who was on life support twice, and it saved my marriage. Yeah. Now, to what extent did it save your life as well? I know uh, one of the things that's talked about a lot is is it's the whole family going through addiction. Uh, most folks out there can't imagine what it's like to experience that. So after everything you went through, to have this place finally feel like a home, a solution, how, how significant was that? It's a complete understanding of addiction, which I didn't understand. And it's also dealing with myself and my own emotions and keeping them in check because I, I was lost. I had no hope. and. Uh, the people here brought me back to where I was thinking straight and I was able to have support from them. I am now joined by Premier Daniel Smith. You know, the UCP announcement about the uh, addictions recovery program, the sort of Alberta model that you discussed, uh, when I went to that event, I, was, I wasn't expecting much. It's like, oh, 5% taxes, that the other thing. All those things matter, but that most of the media, the press was crying. It was very emotional. Um, today at the ARC Stampede Breakfast, speaking with people who have graduated, who have been saved, like their lives mm -hmm. saved, their families' lives saved. How important is it to continue to advocate for recovery over just giving these safe supplies to people? Well, Dr. Dean Voss is really a visionary and he's been fighting this battle for a long time and I'm quite happy to walk in and fight the fight with him uh, because the other side, they call it safe supply and I think they do it to uh, to, to try to make it sound is, is if that is a compassionate approach. And to me, there's no such thing as a safe supply of opioids. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. If you look at how they're looking doing this in Vancouver, they are literally giving people a government funded prescription for hydromorphone, which is five times more powerful than, than, uh, than heroin. And what's happening is they're going out onto the street, turning around, selling it, and then they're going and getting fentanyl. And they're actually increasing the amount of supply of opioids on the street. And it's getting into the hands of younger and younger kids. And that we've got to reverse that. So when I first met Dr. Dean Voss, gosh, it's over a decade ago now, mm -hmm. I thought, what an incredible approach where you don't give up on people, where you get uh, uh, this peer support so that kids who've recovered can act as a role model and mentor, and quite frankly, also a BS detector, yeah. so that they can coach the other kids coming up. And, and they also, I think we've got this Hollywood idea that recovery happens in 28 days. I'm not mm. sure where that idea came from, but this is an in-house program that I think goes up to nine months. And I, I always thought when I found out about this program, seeing the successes, we can do this for kids. Why can't we do this for everyone? And that's part of the approach that we're taking, marrying some of the best practices that I've already seen working here mm. and making sure it's available to everyone. I know folks are waiting for you. One last question, if you don't mind. We've seen First Nations leaders across the province um, sort of rallying behind this. The people that I've spoken with here today talked about, well, people in, in the sort of conventional system, they're doing their best. They're trying to help people, but they didn't feel hope until they found a place like this. Is that what the priority is here, restoring hope? I can tell you that uh, having, ha having a chief of staff who's been there himself, he understands how important it is to create a community. That part of the reason people get into addiction and stay in addiction is that's where their friends are. And you have to create a new community so that they can see that there's another way of living. And so that's what, what, we're, what we're doing. And part of what I've noticed with First Nations leadership is that 
And it's probably not just First Nation, Nations leadership. It's all of us. We all have some loved one that we've lost to the uh, illness of addiction. And we've all also enjoyed being able to see some of them recover from it. So we know recovery is possible. I actually personally think that recovery is the most likely outcome with the number of people that I have met who talk about dark times that they had and the support that they had to find the pathway out. We just need to give more pathways to people, stop putting up barriers and uh, make sure that there is that hope. I believe every single person can, can recover. It might not happen the first time, might not happen uh, the second time, but eventually they'll find the pathway and it's up to us in government to support that, not to keep them mired in the state of despair that they are when, when they don't have control over their own decisions because they're only thinking about their next fix. Uh, when I when I talked to uh, Chief Horry Crowfoot this week, it was a very moving answer that he gave because we're going to go down the pathway of treatment orders as well. We can already do that for young people, but when somebody is addicted, and they can't make decisions themselves. If there are harm to themselves or others, we've got to find a, a similar pathway. And when he was asked about that, he said, you know what? Like, we just don't sit back as a community mm -hmm. and allow people to self-destruct. And why, why do we? We shouldn't be sitting back and allowing people to self-destruct. We need to get people back on the, the pathway to recovery and getting their lives back. Well, it was a great honor to be at this incredible event, speak with some of the politicians who are out here supporting the important work being done by ARC, as well as speaking most importantly to a number of the graduates who have recovered and defeated addiction due to strong networks of support emphasizing recovery. As always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. If you believe that governments right across this country should be doing their very best to help people recover from addiction instead of supplying them with state-funded drugs, we're covering stories like this right across the country at helpnotharm.ca.